Ultra wide displays. For as long as I can remember, I always thought they were a gimmick. I never really wanted one. And for that reason, they just never appealed to me. I always just thought, why not use dual monitors, triple monitors? What is the need? for a great big screen. It's not really a technology to be taken seriously, very much in the same way that 3D was really popular and then just, it died. But I have a confession to make. I think my opinion has been changed. A week ago, a company called Laptops Direct got in touch and they wanted to see if I wanted to take a look at the electric 49 inch QLED curved 32 by nine panel. And obviously I jumped at the chance to take a look at a 49 inch ultra wide. And for someone who's never really been interested in ultra wides, I really took this as an opportunity to actually try one and see what I thought of it. Quick disclaimer, Laptops Direct did send me this to review for free, but this video is not sponsored and they've not asked me to say anything specific about this screen. So all the opinions and views in this video are entirely my own. This video is just a first impressions, not an in-depth review. If you're here for a full review, then be sure to subscribe because I will be uploading one in about a week or two. This video though, is just going through my initial impressions of using this ultra wide monitor. So before we get into it, let's do a quick spec runoff. So what we have here is a curved VA panel, a 5120 by 1440 resolution, a 32 by nine ratio, 3000 to one contrast, 120 Hertz refresh rate, and a four millisecond gray to gray response time. Although I always take response times with a pinch of salt because I know that they're not always entirely accurate. Now in terms of overall quality control of this panel, I've not seen any dead or stuck pixels. And to be honest, it seems pretty perfect. This is a VA panel. So the color accuracy isn't gonna be quite there as say an IPS display, but in all honesty, I found the colors to be really good on this. Whether they're accurate, I don't know. I will be doing a full test of that in the full review, but for now I've really enjoyed using this. From what I've read online, this is actually a Samsung panel, although I can't 100% confirm that. I am gonna get in touch with Electric to confirm. Now it kind of makes sense straight away to talk about the size of this thing. It is huge. Honestly, when it came at the door, the box it came in, they, they delivered it vertically and the guy was literally like the same height as the box. And I just thought, whoa, this is gonna be big. I was a little worried that it wouldn't fit on my desk. I have a two meter desk here and there's about 20 centimeters either side of it free. And then I've got my computer right at the back there. So there's basically no space left on my desk. So if you're looking at getting one of these, just be aware you are gonna need a lot of space, at least a two meter desk. You could, I suppose, have a smaller desk, but the monitor would just hang over the edges. Before I had this screen, I had a 4K ViewSonic panel, which was a really great panel, honestly, super color accurate, really good screen. But that was 4K, so obviously it was 2160 on the vertical resolution, whereas this is 1440. So technically this is actually a downgrade in resolution. But in this video, I'm gonna explain why that hasn't really mattered to me in my day-to-day -day use of this screen and why actually going from 4K to this hasn't been a sort of bigger jump as I'd expect. In terms of the design of this monitor, it's really quite minimal and I actually really like that. Even though a lot of the specs of this are aimed towards gamers, the design itself isn't overly gamery in its like looks. I actually really quite like the minimalist style of this. I think if you're someone that just does a lot of productivity tasks, this screen would fit in fine and not look really, I don't know, not have that real gamer aesthetic. The one thing I do wish this monitor kind of skipped on was the logo on the front. It's quite big and white and I'd rather it maybe have been a little bit smaller or maybe like, I don't know, debossed or something and not so white, maybe like a nice silver or something that kind of reflects against the light. That's not really gonna affect the day-to-day -day use of this screen though, so it's not really a big deal. Now the stand that you get with this does have a bit of a gamery aesthetic, especially with these kind of red highlights on the top. But to be honest, again, you won't see this behind the screen. Out of the box, the stand does have cable management, which is really nice. And the stand enables you to adjust the height and also you can tilt the screen as well. In terms of the actual build quality of this monitor, I'd say it's pretty good, especially for the price point. So no complaints from me. Now this is the first curved screen that I've ever actually used. I've seen curved screens at like my friends' houses and stuff, but I've never really been that interested in them. Again, I thought that, that was a bit of a gimmick, similar to the whole ultra wide thing in general. I think this is actually quite immersive, especially if you're playing games, but even for productivity, if you're editing with Premiere Pro, for example, having that kind of wraparound feel of all of your interface is actually kind of nice. One thing that's great is that a remote is included. This is something that I wish all monitors had inside the box because it's so much easier to navigate the menu with a remote control. I hate fiddling around with the buttons on the bottom of a monitor. So I really love the fact that Electric have included this. So let's talk about using this for creative tasks. Multitasking, as you can imagine, is absolutely fantastic on this. 49 inch ultra wide works out as essentially having two 27 inch screens side by side. I have really enjoyed using this especially for editing with Premiere Pro and even some Photoshopping as well. The thing that I really love is that if you're using two dual screens, you can't really extend what's on one screen to the other without having a big line through it. And a lot of the time it doesn't really work 
either. Whereas with this, you can actually basically use two thirds of the screen for one application and the other third for something else. Or, you know, you can break it up however you really want to. And with Windows 11 coming out with that new split screen interface thing, where you can split the screen up into different sections, a monitor like this is gonna be really useful. If you're a video editor, retoucher, color grader, Photoshopper or whatever kind of job you do, even if you're someone who just does Word documents, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun using this screen real estate. Now, one concern I think a lot of people have is their necks. Is your neck gonna be having to move around all the time to actually use this screen? And I must admit it was a concern of mine when it first came. I thought to myself, surely if I wanted to use this edge to edge, I'm just gonna be sat here doing this <laughs> all the time, right? It's been fine. I've had no problems with it. And in fact, what I do is I just put my window central and then everything around it, I can just like drag off other things. So if I'm doing stuff on the internet, I'll put it right in the center. And then I'll just put like Spotify off at the side or something like that. If I am editing in Premiere Pro, for example, I can stretch it all the way to the edge. And then, a, you know, a quick glance or head movement isn't gonna cause me, you know, long-term issues. So that's not really been a problem for me. For gaming, this is an amazing screen. It runs at 120 Hertz refresh rate. So you're gonna be getting a much smoother gaming experience. And to be quite honest, I don't think I can ever go back to 60 Hertz. So that ViewSonic that I mentioned earlier was 60 Hertz. And I thought that was fine. Like I gamed like that for years and I just thought 60 Hertz, whatever, this is fine. This is no problem. What a fool I was. If you're a gamer and you've never used above 60 Hertz, I really recommend it. And I think given the range of monitors out right now and the price that they are, I don't think there's any excuse anymore to be on 60 Hertz, to be quite honest. Now in terms of ghosting, this is a VA panel and I know that VA panels can ghost a little bit. This did have a bit of ghosting using the UFO tests online, but in all honesty, I've never seen it in games and it's never been an issue for me. Now, one thing you may be wondering is do games support this 32 by nine wide resolution? Well, some do not, but most do. So I've been playing Rainbow Six Siege and although 32 by nine apparently was supported at some point, Ubisoft have kind of updated it and broken the game apparently according to Reddit. And I have to play this at 21 by nine. Even at 21 by nine, it's still a really immersive experience. So if you are playing any games that have an issue with 32 by nine, 21 by nine should still be possible on most. I did start playing Fallen Order on this, and I have been incredibly impressed with how this plays on this monitor. It's been a really great experience, especially exploring all these different worlds and all these different scenarios with this ultra wide space. You know, there's a scene right at the very beginning of the game where you're like walking through a train, just having the whole game in your peripheral vision, it's so immersive. But do bear in mind that when there's cutscenes, a lot of games just automatically go to 16 by nine. So you'll be playing on this like super wide field of view and then suddenly it's like bosh. 16 by nine cinematic. It does throw you out a little bit, but it's not really been an issue for me, especially as most of the time you'll be playing 32 by nine, it definitely shouldn't ruin your experience. I've also been playing a bit of Rocket League and this as well has been fantastic on this screen. I can basically see like the entire pitch. and I don't know if that's like cheating kind of maybe, but it's been a really fun experience for me playing this game. And I think I've actually gotten a bit better at it because of the field of view. But honestly, playing, you've got your car in the middle and then you've just got this huge view around you. It's really fun. So there's some of the things that I do really like about this screen. When I first got it, I did worry that I wouldn't like it at all, but literally a couple of days of using it and I got used to it. And to be honest now, I can't really imagine not having something like this. Although there's a lot of great things to say about this screen, there are also some not so good things. So I did find the screen a little saturated out of the box, especially compared to my previous screen. If you're someone that needs to rely on color for your work, I definitely recommend color calibrating this. Now, unfortunately online on Electric's website and even on other websites as well, there's like no information about the color coverage on this. So what is the percentage of sRGB? I can't tell you, but in the review, which is coming up, I will be actually testing this with a color calibration unit and going through the actual color coverage of this screen. So stay tuned for that. Now just a heads up to Electric though, if you're watching this, definitely look at putting your sRGB coverage and stuff on your website because people want to know that if they're buying a monitor and if there's someone that needs reliable colors, the first thing they're going to look at is how much sRGB coverage there is, how much RGB coverage there is. And if they don't know, they probably won't buy the screen. So this kind of thing could be how I'm in your sales. Although I don't have a clue yet what the color coverage is on this, I will say that the white balance is pretty good. So browsing web pages, pages seem white and not yellow, which is great. Another thing that's not so great about this screen is the HDR. And if you noticed, I've not really spoken about it in this video and that's because in all honesty, I don't really think it's worth turning on. Some people might like it, but this is like the lowest level of HDR you can get, HDR 400. Like that's, oh, oh, you can do 400 nits of brightness? Cool, your HDR just about. That's like the lowest level you can get in terms of certification for HDR. I don't think it's gonna be good in most situations. You know, if you want the best HDR performance, you wanna be looking at your HDR 1000 units, but being HDR 400, you're not gonna get the best HDR performance from this. And to be honest, I'd probably just leave it off. You can tell where Electric has kind of saved money on this 
nice and it would be in terms of the ports that you get you only get two hdmis two display ports and then a 3.5 mil jack there's no USB C. there's no usb upstream or hub so you can't connect this to your computer and use it as a usb hub which i know a lot of people really like but can you really complain about these things at this price point i don't think you can this is the cheapest 49 inch ultra wide with 1440p res that you can actually get on the market with that in mind I don't think those things are a problem So I guess the question is after talking about my first impressions do I still think ultra wide is a gimmick? Well, do you know what? I don't anymore. I think actually it's pretty good and after having used it I can't really imagine going back to a standard 16 by 9 screen even in the long run if I found 49 inch a bit too big I think I'd probably go to like a 34 inch ultra wide or something like that Just having this screen size flexibility has been really great for me Especially when I do a lot of Premiere Pro editing a lot of photo editing and when I can a lot of gaming It's been such a good experience using the screen. I'm really gonna struggle going back to ever having 16 by 9 and anything under 120 hertz like I cannot go back to that anymore if you've enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like it really helps out the channel if you're thinking about getting this and you have any comments or questions leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible if you want to see more content from me including the full review of this monitor be sure to subscribe and hit that little alert button as well as it'll tell you when I've uploaded something new and I'll see you in the next one